So I'm getting asked this question a lot, so I thought I'd answer it this morning, and I thought, oh, I'll go put on my Mark Pettipa coaching shirt, and I'll get in my office with my logo behind my, my uh, head there on the wall, and then I figured, you know what? I look like the 50-year-old millennial this morning. <laughs> look a little disheveled having my coffee. And thought I'd explain it for everyone, and I'll share this on social media. Um, yeah. Um, so the, the book, really... Um, it's not about millennials. Um, it is about the millennials' courage to demand better leadership. Um, and so I believe the millennials are the first generation that value leadership, and they'll speak up when they don't get it. I think that's the difference. I think previous generations valued leadership, um, but when we didn't receive what we wanted, we kind of hung in there, um, and we put up with it, and we hoped it would go away uh, because we didn't want to lose a paycheck. Um, and I think this generation's different. And I think the talent game is shifting. Um, and organizations are going to have to get better at leading and developing people. And their reputations for doing so are available online now. And that's what shifted. So your company gets Google reviews and you invest all your energy in making sure those look good. Um, yet the same thing's happening with your employment brand. You know, Glassdoor, Indeed, um, social media people speak when they're not getting good leadership. And so I think the millennial generation is the one that said, okay, well, I'll just go. I'll go find it somewhere else, because I can. And so what I wanna do is help organizations attract and retain that talent by upping their leadership game. And so the 50-year-old millennial, being me, and, and, and the cover of the book's a little bit of a lie, I'm, I'm not 50 yet. Um, I'm very too darn close, you could round up. Um, but that I've learned from other leaders, and I tell stories in the book of people who've been doing this um, for decades, um, before the millennials entered the workforce, some of them. And it was just good leadership and good process and great behaviors. And so what I've taken is from all of those great leaders and built a process. And so I tell the story of the great leaders, and then I tell the story of how that's morphed into a process for me, and then I leave you with a checklist at the end of every chapter. So... The subtitle of the book is The Leadership Gap Exposed by the Millennials and How to Close It. So this book is really about retaining talent. It's about attracting talent and the key behaviors that leaders need to learn how to perform. That's what the book's about. Um, it's not about my desire to be young again, although I'd take that in a heartbeat. Um, but it's about the courage the millennials have had to say, okay, I'll just go elsewhere. I deserve better and I'm not getting it here. So I wanna help organizations close that gap without calling them out. So the book, there's no negative stories about this person. Um, there's a couple of my personal stories about where I learned from those type of experiences, but I don't name people, I don't name companies. There's no point in that. Um, let's all close that gap together. And I truly believe if we do that, we can improve mental health in this country because people are happier at work, they're developing, organizations are succeeding, it's good for profitability. How does that not make this a better place? So there you go. That's it. And I figured <laughs> I look 50 this morning. So happy Thursday, everybody.